last two segments of STEM, engineering and mathematics. Please enjoy from one of the smartest kids and professionals from the industry to discuss mathematics and engineering. Enjoy. Sure, thank you so much uh, for coming again. Um, so we're going to do the math section for STEM. And our first speaker is Sriya Kalian. I hope I pronounced your name properly. And welcome, Sriya. Hello. So um, as Kirsten mentioned, my name is Sriya Kalian. And today I'll be talking about math, which I am super interested in. So a little bit about myself. Um, I will be a junior at Agora High School next year. So I'm really excited for that. Two more years of high school. So that's fun. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm super interested in math. So I hope to get you guys hooked on the subject as well today. And a little bit of my hobbies include reading, coding, and playing Minecraft. Uh, I mainly read fantasy books. Uh, I really don't like the books that they make us read in English class. Coding, I know a couple of languages. I really like coding Minecraft plugins above all in Java. And playing Minecraft, I really do a lot with Minecraft. I'm an admin on a server. I, what was I going to say? <laughs> um, I watch a bunch of Minecraft YouTubers. It's very cool. And a little fun fact about myself is that I'm really obsessed with Pokemon. I've watched almost every single episode of every season. I've read some of the books they've had. Very interesting. I have the trading card game. Just obsessed with it in general. All right, so let's get into what math is about. So math is usually one of those subjects that I hear people saying are one of their most hated subjects, but it's something I really love to do. In math, we're constantly looking for ways to solve problems, we're proving formulas to give them mathematical backing, and we're always finding easier ways to solve any problem we may see. My favorite parts of math include manipulating equations and proofs, especially trigonometric identities. We had to do them in my trig class and I instantly fell in love. Trigonometry is just so fun in general. Um, a little bit about my background in math. I just finished Calculus 3 at Moore Park College, which is my local community college. I will be taking linear algebra this summer and differential equations in the fall. And finally, I will be taking discrete mathematics probably in senior year. And once I finish that course, I would have finished every single math class offered at Moore Park College, which I find very cool. <laughs> um, now, whenever people mention the applications of math, we always think of that poor child who's like shoving 57 watermelons into the back of their trunk, or the person who wants us to calculate how fast a ladder is sliding down a, a wall. But neither of these are things we will actually see in real life. There are so many actual applications of math that we don't even think about. This includes shopping, music, driving, cooking, sports, and money and time management. When we go shopping, we try to maintain a budget. We try to find the best deal for anything we buy, and we try to spend our money wisely. Well, at least I hope you guys do. Um, music has beats and notes that help musicians produce the sounds we love. When we drive, we pay attention to our fuel supply. We look at distances to our next point. We watch how fast we're going and if we should accelerate or decelerate. When we cook or bake, we take careful measurements of our ingredients to make sure we don't add too much of one to it or whatever we're cooking. I've done that once, ended up. Play, we where we want it to go. We look at the speed of the ball and rearrange our racket position as needed. For example, if the ball is coming quicker, we've learned to close our racket face in more so it doesn't like zoom up. So there are just so many applications of math that make it a really fascinating subject. Next slide, please. So now for my journey into STEM. Being a girl in STEM was a definitely an ex interesting experience. I was I remember being one of the only girls in my school math counts team and in eighth grade in my geometry class, which is something like the highest ki kids with math did, took, 
There were only three girls. We stuck together. Actually, I think there were four. There were four in a class of 30. That was not, well, it was an interesting experience. Um, I definitely found it lonely at first because I would try to stick with my friends who were girls at the time. And we always goofed off a bit. So I never really got the math experience or never really got that experience of working on math, but eventually I had the chance to branch out and discover more opportunities like Agora Math Circle and UCLA Math Circle. And once I got, found those opportunities, I started to have a larger friend group who were into the same things as I was. It was just really nice. I discovered my interest for math after solving this really, really long equation. I think it was in the end of elementary school, I'm not really sure, but we had to manipulate, I think, five different equations to try to solve for variables. Not much at the time, but once I finished, it was like, whoa, very cool. It was a very satisfying feeling that I really, really liked. I was just super happy, super satisfied. I remember looking at a piece of paper. I, th I think my, the entire piece of paper was filled with my steps and I wrote nicely because I was like really into solving the problem. It's just really satisfying to look at afterwards. Math led me to believe that I could solve any problem if I just gave it time and think, thought about it in a logical way. There's always a solution and it's up to you guys to figure it out. Some of the things that definitely helped my journey into STEM were Math Counts, NSF, AMC competitions, Math Kangaroo, UCLA Math, UCLA Math Circle, and more. Math Counts is a middle school math competition that you attend with your team. It's the middle picture I have there. There's my teacher on the left. I think that's, left. yeah, that's left. Me and then the rest of my team, which you can see, we're all guys. I believe that in all my three years at Math Counts, there were only three girls on the team of 10. Like there was the main team and then alternates. But yeah, for my Two out of three years, I was the only girl on the team. So, <laughs> um, NSF was a math competition, or a competition that involved English and math and science. Um, I won a comp. I won it a couple of times, and the pictures on the right with me and my brother posing with our trophies. I think that's from elementary school. I don't remember. Um, my brother and I are also on the left. Just cool pictures from my journey. Uh, AMC competitions include AMC 8 and 10. Uh, I think I took 12 once. Honestly, don't remember. Memory's kind of awful right now. But they're really good competitions, and they, let, they are challenging and allow you to um, think analytically, and they're just really nice. And then Math Kangaroo, which is more on the logic side of competitions rather than applying concepts you would have learned like that. But sorry, I just blank circle and Agora Math Circle are just um, class-like things where you guys can learn math. And math, Agora Math Circle was a really big part of my journey. So I'm gonna probably spend a couple of minutes on that. Anyways, UCLA Math Circle, um, I joined it in fifth or sixth grade and I have been attending ever since. So that's about six, uh, not six, five years. I met a bunch of cool friends. Still, I'm really close with. It was just a really nice experience getting to work with so many people. And in these places, there were, especially in UCLA Math Circle, there were more girls. I believe it was like a 50 50 ratio, which was really, really nice to see because previously in my math classes, there would only be like 10 or so, which is small considering the size of our classes. Anyways, moving on to Agora Math Circle. So Agora Math Circle started off in my garage with my brother teaching my friend and I. Her name was also Shreya, so that was really funny. Um, it then grew into a 10 class, a thousand student program with over 50 student volunteers. We also have a bunch of side programs and Agora Math Circle has allowed me to grow as a person and as a mathematician. In Agora Math Circle right now, I teach a class full of uh, middle and high schoolers calculus. And it's really, really nice to see all these young students 
And there's a lot of girls in my class too. So it's really, really nice to see them learning this advanced math at such a young age. And even though I'm technically the teacher, I'm always learning from them, whether it's a new way to go about solving a problem or if it's just a random fact, I'm always learning. And Bogora Massacre has just been a major part of my math journey. And right now uh, I am the CEO of it right under my brother, who's the president. And I, that's just very cool because yeah, <laughs> I also have made um, YouTube videos explaining concepts for our different classes. Angela has as well. They're very good. You guys should definitely watch them, but more on that later. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's a really nice opportunity and I'm so glad to have been a part of its journey. And it's really helped me grow. Next slide, please. So now, now you may be wondering, what are the benefits of math? Well, math in general is a fun field to work in. You get to work with talented individuals. You get to think outside of the box always. And you get to think more analytically, which I think is just an important part of growing as a person. There are some social benefits, yeah, social benefits which include a more advanced society and a more economically knowledgeable population. And although these are, I guess, sort of big words, they're just make the world a better place. And math is just fascinating, just very cool. So why should girls get involved? Well, I found this chart online while I was looking at different numbers. And these are some of the top colleges when we think of just universities in general. There's Harvard. Harvard, MIT, Yale, Princeton, Brown. And if you look at it, um, the very first row with Harvard, there's 245 people in the bachelor's program. 20% of them are women. Now, if you think about that, that's 49 students, if I did my math correctly, and I really hope I did because I'm talking about math, but that's 49 students out of 245, which definitely needs to change. We do need more women in math. So I don't know if you guys have heard of the stereotype that goes around. I mean, uh, but women are known to be overthinkers and we're known to be able to track anyone on social media within seconds. And I would say this comes from to math or STEM in general, our field, this field of STEM can just expand more, much more than we would have thought. We can expand. There's just so many things we can do. So next slide, please. All right, so here's some advice. What I would do um, is if you wanna try out math or any STEM, thing in general is find math competitions. Literally just Google math competitions and you can probably find loads and loads of things in your area or national competitions. And I even named a few earlier, like Math Kangaroo and the AMC competitions. Just math competitions in general allow you to broaden your social circle as you get to work with talented in individuals in the same field. And it's just a really nice experience in general. Like I remember my math counts we had, I think, state competition at uh, BYU University. I think it's been a while. Um, I remember like, just getting to meet so many new people. And I saw some of my friends from UCLA Math Circle there, and it was really funny. And what else was I going to say? I, I've just made so many memories at these math competitions. I remember like getting vanilla ice cream topped with sprinkles and caramel at their buffet. It was just really good kind of getting off track here, but um, I would also recommend you talk to your math teachers or any math teacher at your school. Chances are they've had students like you or they just are knowledgeable about things you can do in math, whether it's like career advice, it's more competitions, ways to improve um, your math skills. It's just really good. Another thing is finding math circles in your area. I found about found out about um, UCLA math circle the same way, just Googling math circles. And like math competitions, this allows you to broaden your range of the people you associate with. And you get to work with so many talented people and learn so many new things. It's just really nice. You can also start a club. 
you can um just start my friends have started math clubs and have grown it a lot you can just tutor kids in math um in these clubs you can also just teach topics every week or whatever you want to do starting a club brings more people who are interested in the same things to you and it's just really nice and the last thing i would say or if you're interested is finding a mentor mentor can be really useful because they would be a guide throughout your entire career and they can grow as another really good friend and they'll really help tone stuff specific to you so really helpful i mean i would say my brother is my kind of mentor because i followed in his footsteps a lot and it was really helpful so finding a mentor is definitely important another thing is explore everything you may have not found what you're super interested in yet, and that's okay. That's why you should explore. When you explore, you can find things that click with you. And if you pursue those things that click, your life will be so much nicer as you'll lead a life with doing everything you love. Find what makes you happy and what gives you that satisfaction that makes you feel good. Like how I solved that problem really felt good. You need to find whatever clicks for you. And Another important thing, and I guess this doesn't only apply to STEM, but it applies to life in general, is you're not alone. There's always people there to help you. Just do your best and don't bother about the rest. And I just realized that rhymes. <laughs> that was not intentional. But what I like to do is I used to have the mentality that I would be competing with my peers. I would try to get higher test scores than them. I would try to score higher on math competitions than them. And once I realized that that isn't the way to go about uh, com competition. I realized that I should be competing with myself. Is this, and I keep asking myself, is this the best I can do? I got a 89 on this test. Could I have done better? If so, how can I do better? I think changing my mentality from competing with others and my friends to competing with myself has really helped myself grow as a person and just change uh what i'm doing so a couple of resources that are really helpful if you're interested in this field are um my agora math circles youtube channel we have a bunch of videos you should definitely check it out as we have videos on um different coding subjects we've had videos on competition math that angela's helped with very cool stuff we just have topics on everything. So you guys should definitely check us out and subscribe. Another thing I would recommend doing is looking at Art of Problem Solving. I remember doing a bunch of their books for practice. It was, it probably really, it shaped my math skills a lot, especially the one picture I have here, Competition Math for Middle School. It goes over the basics. It's super helpful. I've done this book about seven times, like very, very helpful stuff. And although, so I've heard this question uh, in our last panel, soft doubt is going to happen in your career. However, there are some, there are other people experiencing the same thing. And like I said earlier, you're not alone. So it's going to happen, but you can easily overcome it. And you guys got this. So uh, next slide, please. So. Um, now that my whole thing about math is done, if you guys share any of the same interests as I do, like it doesn't even have to be math, or if you have questions about math, just feel free to shoot me an email. It's listed on the screen. And yeah, thank you guys for listening. Thank you so much, Shreya. That was amazing. That was a wonderful presentation. And I myself learned so much from that as well. And you definitely showed us that math isn't just a super tough subject at school. It goes outside of the classroom and it goes to shape who, your interests and who you end up becoming. So thank you for that. And then now we're going to move on. Kirsten, you can introduce our next speaker. Yes, our next is speaker for math is going to be Isabel and Isabel works for Boeing. Uh, welcome Isabel, uh, our next professional speaker. I think you're still muted. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Isabel Kalili, and I work uh, in the Boeing company. 
So can you please go to the next slide? Um, so uh, I work in the um, for the high frequency communication systems in the Boeing company, and uh, basically um, we build and test the parts that are gonna go to the satellites that are gonna be used for uh, you know communications in communication system, and uh, basically um, I use the rules that I learned in math and physics uh in a practical way in my engineering work and um, yeah and um, my hobbies are mainly hiking with my friends and visiting my friends and also um watching documentaries uh, watching uh, videos that are about uh, gardening and also afternoon walks in beautiful neighborhoods can you go to the next slide yeah, so basically, um, as I mentioned, um, I am in the communication, uh, high frequency communication system of the Boeing company. And uh, what we do, we uh, build and test uh, parts and units that are gonna go to the satellites. And um, these satellites, uh, um, we sell them to, you know, some, sometimes our customer is the, government, the defense uh, section of the government, and sometimes uh, they are just uh, commercial satellites. And uh, basically, the, as I mentioned, the base of, you know, what I, what the work we do, uh, like, uh, you know, the tests we do, and like, you know, um, what we build, like basically, um, the base of them are like, uh, somehow goes back to like rules in the physics and maths, what we learn in the like, you know, high level physics and math. Um, can you go to the next slide? So uh, I, I um, discovered, I learned about my interest in math and physics when I was, uh, you know, like um, in high school. So I took some math and physics and uh, I really did good in those classes, received high grades and also, uh, was really like uh, had the fun about like what I was learning in those classes, and uh, you know uh, I was really like you know was so interested to learn more and more. Uh, so and uh, you know sometimes you know when you go to the class you have difficulties like you know you are struggling to like you know uh, just even to sit and listen to the to your teacher. But when I was in math and physics class, I didn't have those issues. Actually, I was very excited you know to like go to the class so that uh, you know was the like beginning of my my journey to the stem i i was discovering okay i like this pad but what i really liked it was to like you know use those knowledge i have from these classes in a practical way like you know in a kind of an engineering uh, field so i uh, i received uh, my um, diploma in my country back in Iran. And then um, with my family, I came to the United States. And when I came here, um, you know, I talked to my relatives, like my uncles who have been living in the United States uh, for like, you know, 20 years, 30 years before I come. Uh, about like, you know, what you recommend to, that I choose as my major, you know, for college and then going to university. And they were like, um, it's, it's really good that, you know, you um, are interested in STEM. You are like, you know, it's good, but uh, don't go to engineering. Uh, like um, go to something like, you know, more uh, related to like science, biology, neuroscience, anything is fine, but don't go to engineering because, you know, that's what like they taught engineering is not something that, you know, is like fit for women. It's not a major for women. And um, like one of them, like for example, one of my uncles said, if I had a daughter, I didn't let her go to like, you know, in engineering field. I just like, you know, um, encourage her like go to a dentistry, like go to medical school. So I just like, you know, I listened to them. I was like, you know, like 18, 17, uh, I think 19, I don't remember at that time. And then I went to college and took biology classes, you know, chemistry classes. And then I um, went to the to went to UCLA for cognitive psychology program, and um, I received my bachelor. 
in 2013. And then, uh, you know, when I received my bachelor in cognitive psychology, I was like, um, I was in so much doubt. I was like, okay, is this really what I wanted to like do? Like, you know, is it like the career I like to like, you know, like if I find a job related to cognitive psychology, is it really what I had passion for? Is it what I dreamed about? And it was like in, uh, in deep in my mind, I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I was in doubt that like, does it work that I, you know, like I change my major to something completely different, like engineering. I didn't have the courage. And uh, honestly, everyone in the in my family just discouraged me. Like, you know, they said like, um, not because, uh, not because like, you know, they wanted to like, you know, um, basically they thought like they want the good thing for me. They, they, they thought like, you know, it's crazy. You change like your major from like suddenly jump from something like psychology jump to something like engineering. And basically even my sister, like my sister is very close to me. Like she wants the best for me, but she was like, um, be realistic. What, what are you talking about? Like why you think like you can even like, um, like why you think like they even like um, get you for this? Like if you apply for engineering, why you think like, uh, they you have a chance to get to the program or why you think like you know kind of like a, uh, like um, be sitting in a class with someone who has you know like has more knowledge comparison to you like you know so many like discouraging like you know talks and I was in doubt for like you know um, long time and um, so I took like some uh, um, uh, volunteer positions for like a cognitive psychology in UCLA. You know, I was assistant for a couple of professors in UCLA who were doing like, you know, research about like uh, learning, you know, cognitive, uh, like um, different kinds of um, subjects about cognitive psychology. And uh, I was their uh, assistant for like, you know, I think one year. And then uh, all this, all during all this time, like I was always in doubt, like I'm like, <laughs> it's not what I want to do. <laughs> But I like I kept doing what I was doing, and then, you know, I um just uh, after one year, I was like again in the, like in so much doubt. I I talked to my sister, and she said like, okay, you say you don't like cognitive psychology, but you have the bachelor, you can apply for like you know something like medical school, like dentistry school, and she said like you always liked animals, so why you don't go to like you know veteran veterinary school. And I'm like, um, I don't know. And then again, I took like, you know, um, not um, like um, assistant uh, position in a um, vet uh, hospital for animals. And um, I was there for like a, a couple of months and I was like, okay, no, I like animals, but it's not what, it's not what I am. It's not what I like. It's like ridiculous. It's not like who I am. Why? Um, and when I was like working in the hospital, I liked animals. I like that I'm not, I'm helping like, you know, um, like sick animals, but I'm like, it's not me. Like, uh, it's not what I want to do. So I left uh, also that position. And finally, after like, you know, four years since I got my bachelor, I um, just applied for, you know, um, mass, uh, master degree because I had one bachelor, I couldn't get at the second bachelor. So I applied for master degree of electrical engineering for, uh, uh, like four different Cal State University, Cal State, Northridge, Long Beach, and um, LA, and uh, I forgot the fourth one, sorry. And then uh, I, uh, I was surprised, I was so shocked that I got actually, uh, like I received like a um, letter of like, you know, I was accepted for all of them, like all of them, like, you know, like I just like got me to the program. And I chose uh, Cal State Northridge because it was close to where I, like where I live. So it, it wasn't easy for me, you know, I had to like, you know, uh, struggle with my family, with my mind, with my thoughts, you know, is it like, I didn't have the courage, but um, finally I did it. So I got to the program and then um, when I got to the program, everything changed, you know, I found friends and, you know, like mm, I made connections with my classmates and like, you know, I finally at the first semester when I was on CSUN, I was like, okay, and now I'm in the right place. Now I am where I was supposed to be from the beginning. So, yeah. And to bring picture of journey into STEM. 
so i always honestly i always was so proud of you know myself for like changing my path to a finally having the courage to like you know uh, just go back to the path that from the beginning was for me and uh, i was so proud of myself after like you know i studied where i was supposed to be and um, being part of stem for me it means like being part of you know uh, the like having a role in uh, you know um like uh, that improving modern having a role for improving modern technology and also it means like i learn a lot about the world that i am living uh, living in and also um basically to be honest i can say that uh, companies and also um like based on what i saw in the university i studied in um they like all the all my professors uh, all my coworkers uh, basically my managers they um they supported me i never had any issues because i was a female engineer and um basically like um i could always see like uh, all my male coworkers male managers and my male classmates they just supported me i never had any like uncomfortable situations even if sometimes i was the only uh, female student in the class so can you go to the next slide So uh, just okay. My uh, advice for who like uh, those uh, younger youngers who want to like you know continue or or maybe start a journey on STEM is to always believe in yourself and uh, follow your interests. Just you know, don't let uh, occasional fa failures disappoint you because you know everybody can fail. It's okay. It's not. Um, it's not unusual and the most important thing is to just learn from like you know what uh, caused you to fail and one of the most most like i actually i can say the most important thing is to like you know try to make as many connections as you can uh and it can be connections with the successful people in this field like you know those who have been um working in this field uh, for many years uh, like you know you can find these people on linkedin or like you know also it can be connections with the uh, you know other students other like you know young um, girls who are like you know like you they are at the beginning of the journey and they you know you can support them they can support you and it's it's really like um, amazing when you guys can like you know support each other on this journey and uh, um also one other important thing is to find mentors you know mentors can guide you through your journey and um, that's really uh, like uh, the best support you can get from a mentor and to face emotional intensity based on what uh, what i experienced for me the best way to you know like face uh, emotional intensity was to talk to my uh, friends who usually were my classmates and you know physical exercises so physical exercise helped me a lot and how to power through self doubt um talk to your mentors because they usually know how to support you uh because you know they have had uh, similar situations before so it's it, like it's uh, uh, usually they know how to like you know what to tell you or like how to support you emotionally or just whatever way they can and uh, talk to your friends who under like to know you who understand you and like express your emotions talk about what's bothering you and um, also always think positively even if it's hard push yourself to like you know in any situations no matter what think positively and just as i mentioned before don't let uh, failures occasional failures um disappoint you can you go to the next slide, please? So, uh, just you know, to um, like um, some advices about how you can spend your free time. Um, try to learn as much as you can about the subject you like, uh, and you know, like it can be through watching fun YouTube videos or you know, talking with the mentors or like um, also reading books. Also, um, 
do activities which uh, help uh, you know uh, to relax your mind it can be depends on what you like it can be yoga it can be swimming running just whatever activity that helps you to like uh, relax your mind and also very very important thing is to participate in uh, clubs uh, that you know you can meet other uh, young girls like yourself and uh, you can make friends connections and you can talk about like you know uh, common uh, stuffs uh, and you know what you like and um, so uh, two of uh, two of the um, two of the famous clubs uh, that i learned about them in season in university one of them was sui society of women engineers and the other one was uh, shipi society of hispanic uh, engineers uh, and of course you don't need to be hispanic to uh, to be member of those um a member of that club and they uh, those clubs were really helpful they like you know i learned how to make my resume um we have um like a good uh, like learned interview um like hints like how to like do a successful interview and so many other skills thank you thank you so much isabel that was wonderful and now we're going to move on to our Q&A segment. So if anyone has any questions, you can drop them in the chat and we will, and then Isabel and Tria can take turns answering them and yeah. So while yes. everybody's thinking of questions, let, let me ask one question. Um, math is deemed to be one of the toughest um, classes why women don't want to go into STEM. So what advice can you give to young people that would like to pursue STEM, but they're scared of math? And before you answer that question, um, bear in mind as well that math regardless we do take math up to a certain level so whilst you you're answering that question if you can have that on your mind so what would you tell to what would you tell young people uh, that are aspiring to pursue stem uh, that are afraid the reason they can't take math it's because they say it's difficult Um, uh, what I can say is that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we think it's difficult because, or like younger um, students think it's difficult because they don't know there are like um, thousands of sources of, you know, sources available that they can use uh, to like, you know, actually learn math. And um, the reason they think is uh, like math is hard because uh, sometimes that's the situation. They don't know that, you know, like, um, like in, college or I think like I, I didn't take high school here but I assume it is the way like in high school uh, there are like um, so many like tutors available or like you know study groups uh, are available some clubs are available or they can actually talk to their teachers or professors that uh, you know the teacher and professor that can introduce them with like you know sources that are available so sometimes you know those um, resources can really change everything. Like you feel like, okay, um, now I understand what's going on because you know um, the way the professor or the teacher explained to me actually made everything more complicated. And when, so for example, someone like the tutor explains to me, or like when I watch this specific um, video from that specific website, uh, now like things make sense. Now it seems like okay, I understand what's going on. So I think it's. Uh, it's important to know there are like so many sources available. We need to just you know, like they need to just like discover them. Yeah, adding on to what Isabel said, math is always gonna be hard. It's just a common thing with math, which I don't know. And it's just important to realize there are so many resources that can really help um, you understand the topic more. Um, it's always helpful to reach out to classmates as they're probably going through the exact same thing. They probably have the same questions you have. So it's just really important to reach out to people that can help you 
and overcome that difficulty? I think it's the perception. I don't know where we have that perception of that math is hard. Um, even me, I had to say, no, first I have to go there and sit in the class and learn. It's not that I have to know everything. I think maybe what we should be advising, you know, everybody who wants to aspire, you know, aspiring to do STEM or pursue STEM is you have to try yourself first, you know, not just to block it and say, uh, math is hard, I can't do it, you know, because there are so many resources, um, you know, you know, and you never know how you may do, but it, the thing is the perception that you first give yourself, you know, you know, if you say you can't do it, then you're blocking all your reasoning. That's it. Then you can do it, you know, so, wow, that's good. Okay. So I think we have some questions on mm -hmm. the um, chat. So Gloria asked us to share our time management strategy. So and thank you for the compliment that follows. Um, I would say my time management strategy isn't the best, but what I like to do that's helped me get my work done is to work for work solidly for an hour or two and then take a nice break to relax my brain just watch by watching TV or just lying in bed doing nothing and then getting back into it. I think focus focusing on your work is a big part of time management. I used to be awful at that. And I think something that's really helped me focus on stuff and focus on getting stuff done is just listening to music in the background. Um, just keeps my mind on one thing. But yeah, that's my time management strategy. For me, for the time management, uh, honestly, like, um... Like it was like some sometimes really hard to like you know do the time management because I had to work and also had to like you know go to the class and also put time for study so sometimes things became complicated so I usually um, try to like you know for my time management I uh, it was very important for me to like uh, put time for group study that is really important you know um, and sometimes I uh, saw that you know. Uh, actually, I didn't like uh, personally knew them, but I heard like some of the like uh, students actually that you know were studying alone, like by themselves, never had like came to like joined uh, like you know study groups or what, like you know like to like just be by themselves. After why they just dropped from like the program, they didn't like couldn't continue. So it's really important like to like you know put in the like put in the time schedule for group study. Like it's, it's, it's doesn't matter that, you know, like you, you know the subject very good or like they know it, like just, you know, when you teach someone, like explain a question, answer to, for a question to like somebody, you learn better. So that's my experience, personal experience. Another question we got was, are there any books or videos that helped you a lot in your math journey? For me personally, the math competition book I had on my slide was really helpful. I think I did a bunch of cliff notes in the beginning. We still have all those books. There's like five of them and I would just work through them with my mom. I didn't really watch videos in math, if I'm being honest. I think I've maybe watched a couple of Khan Academy ones for the more tougher parts of calculus. But for the most part, it's just the math textbooks and with problems that have helped me the most. For yeah. me, um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, you, you can answer too. No, I just wanted to say like, uh, unfortunately I don't have a good answer to this question because you know, the math and physics I took like in my country, there were books like actually very really good books, but they were not in English, so <laughs> I don't have any <laughs> comments. On it. Okay. I think um, let's see if there's another question here. Um, I don't see any other questions, so maybe we, if we have Angela, if you have any question or. 
Oh, there are two more in chat. I can read them off real quick. Oh, yeah, you can read. Go ahead. Um, are there any prominent mathematics clubs that will help young girls in math? Personally, um, I can recommend UCLA Math Circle and Agora Math Circle, but I am, I ha I'm not really aware of any that are centered for girl that are like centered at girls though. But I'm pretty sure if you can go if you Google them, there's loads of them, and I think they might even have one at your school since. I think my school has a couple of girls STEM clubs, so definitely worth checking out. Yeah, and just a quick add-on, if your school doesn't have a girls, for, girls math club, you could start one too. You could also start a club at your school for girls who are interested in math or who really want to pursue that kind of career. And another question we have is, how do you prioritize prioritize if you feel lots of things are important and you want to try and slash dive in. Honestly, prioritization has always been an issue for me, but I would say I would, what I try to do is figure out what thing has the most impact on my life, I guess. Like if I work on an assignment now or watch TV, which one would affect me more, even though prefer one over the other that's how I would go about it do we have any questions from the attendees There's another question in the chat. Um, it says, if each of you can make a change in the STEM fields for girls slash women, what would that be? Uh, for me, let's see. I think I would just change the mentality that everyone has that girls don't belong in STEM or that men are preferred to be in some, I would just change that mentality as a whole um, that, and make it a more inclusive space for everyone, not just girls, but just more inclusivity in general. I honestly, I don't have any specific thing in my mind right now about that question. Um, hmm. Okay, so um, for me about math, I like to tell um, those aspiring to do STEM or just anybody that it's all about X in math. It's all about X, what happened to X. So as we start uh, mathematics in our early stages of our uh, education, we start solving for x. Remember, you have x oranges plus x oranges equals how many oranges. And then as you progress in your mathematics career, x start changing. So you start going into differentiations. And besides that, you know, x is being, you know, bundled into so many variables at once. And then, you know, you start using met matrices uh, things like that. And then it starts advancing more, you know, it's all about derivatives and it's just changing, that's it. So there is nothing about math. It's not hard. It's just what happened to X. And that's how I tell um, everybody that wants to pursue STEM that are scared about math. I'm like, there is nothing difficult about math. We are all just trying to find what happened to X. So when they have that perception, it's interesting. I, I taught that to my son. He really improved his, in his math career. He says, really? I said, that's it. All we're doing is just what happened to X. The next time X will change. And then when it starts changing, it's the rate of change. You know, and then you, you start working with, it's called differentiation. So they'll just start changing the names, what's happening to X. 
After that, he's like, oh, okay, then that's easy. I'm like, yes. And that's just my niche. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure if we have any questions. Any questions from the... I, did, I don't think we have any more questions coming in the chat. And I think that's it. Okay, so I guess that concludes our Q&A segment. <clears throat> so um, thank you to both so much for coming and telling us a lot about your math journey and what you really think about it. And sorry, give me a second to clear my throat. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to concluding remarks. So a couple quick things to go over. We have a feedback form. So if you'd be willing to fill that out, I'm gonna post the link in the chat. It would be wonderful if you could fill that out if you have time just to give us some feedback on what you think about the panel, uh, if, how you're satisfied with it, your overall review just so we can improve on in the future if we choose to do this again, which hopefully we can. And also, um, we also want to mention, oh, okay. Uh, so also we want to thank all everyone for coming. Uh, thank you, even if you just dropped in for a few minutes, it was incredibly helpful to all of us. And Kirsten, if you want, you can put the name of your YouTube channel in the chat. We are going to, or the link to it, and yeah. we're going to post the recording of this panel on her YouTube channel. So if you want to look back on it and see it again and really, you know, absorb the reabsorb all the wonderful information, you can go to her YouTube channel. It is very helpful. All the videos on there are absolutely amazing. So if you want to go on there, feel free to and you can see the recordings. Sure. Let me just um see if I can get it. Mm -hmm. And so with that, uh, once you post the link, we are officially going to be able to conclude our two-day panel. We hope everyone had so much fun. And even if there were some points where you're a bit confused or a bit lost, we hope you still took away some valuable information and insight from this panel, whether it was from our student speakers or from our professional speakers who were all absolutely so phenomenally talented and accomplished and told us so many interesting things. So we thank everyone for coming and we hope you all have an amazing rest of your night, get some good rest and have a wonderful summer. And we, and yeah, Kirsten, you have anything to add? Um, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody for coming. You know, I really appreciate and I hope you gained um, a lot of insight from this, from these discussions. And there, here is my, um, uh, channel. I hope you can see it. Let me know if you can see the channel link. Let's see if that's the, oh, that's, let me know if you can see the channel link. Um, we can't see it. Okay, one if you'd like, I can go find your channel right now and just yeah, put the link so, I don't know why it's not. Possible. Yeah, it's okay. So it's called Girls for STEM USA. They have so many incredibly helpful videos on there. So if you want to check them out right now, you can. And also you can look at them later if you want to. See. Oh, yeah. So yeah. she posted yeah. it. Yeah. Try if you can click on it, you guys, if it goes there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Welcome. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So. With that, um, hopefully you guys can visit our YouTube channel, fill out the feedback form, and we hope you all learned something. And we were definitely very happy to have all of you come. We are incredibly grateful that you took a time out of your day to come listen to us and listen to the amazing speakers that we've been able to get to come. So with that, um, I think we're going to say goodbye and hope everyone has an amazing rest of your night. Yes, so, thank you so much, guys. Hope to see you again. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. So I'm going to end the meeting now. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much. <laughs>